ready for one that's a bit out there. <laughs> this is a source not many people would go and look into. So there's this far right site called uns.com, run by a guy named Ron Uns. It goes and platforms people like Andrew Anglin of the Daily Stormer fame, a whole bunch of other far right people, and there's a lot of crossover with the pro China, Russia, Iranian people. So bizarrely, you're going to have its audience made up of people who are far right or the sort of people who are hyper supportive of the China, Russia, Iran axis that might be on the very much the left side of things. So like the Marxists and communists of that. And these two groups come together on the site uns.com and they go and rant about stuff. All of these articles that are filled with propaganda, fakeness, very rhetorical focus. And of course, they hate Jews on this site. They absolutely hate Jews. They hate anyone that is labeled as Jewish. They hate the Zionists, all that. And so here we have Ron Uns presenting an article entitled The Jewish Roots of the Gaza Rampage, which was written by him as an interview sort of style. Um, by the way, he's also gone and previously blamed, for example, the Jews for the Ukraine-Russia war. Um, he also promoted a piece by Andrew Anglin, which was calling like the Azov Battalion satanic faggots. Like, this is the sort of rhetoric that you're getting. So they absolutely hate anyone who is opposed to their little clique. This is basically, you know what, this is how it is. It's like, imagine if you took lourockwell.com and basically removed the sort of filter that those people have. That's what uns.com would be. <sighs> so, yeah, very much a propaganda outlet. And it's going to be an interesting one. So, question seven, the impact of Aaron Bushnell. Aaron Bushnell's picture is now circulating on social media sites around the world. The majority of people appear to have been very moved by his extraordinary act of self-sacrifice. In your opinion, has Bushnell's self-immolation helped to change the way people think about what's going on in Gaza? Ronans, I think that the consequences may be enormous. I've heard the American mainstream media quickly disappear the story after a day or two so that it had little influence upon the older Americans who rely upon those legacy outlets. But everywhere else, across social media and non-Western broadcasters, the impact must have been gigantic. I'll just stop and say that traffic for Aaron Bushnell, if you go and look at the search traffic for him, it started up very high, but it's basically nothing at the moment. So I'm even a little bit late in getting my uh, report out about him, but such is the way that extensive reports must go. All right, we'll continue with Ron Uns. Let's put the shoe on the other foot. Suppose a Russian military serviceman had burned himself alive outside the Kremlin as an act of personal protest against his country's Ukraine war. Surely the Western media would have treated that event as the biggest story in the world for days, even weeks, declaring that it proved President Vladimir Putin had lost the support of his own people as crumbling regime was head for collapse. The leadership and people of Russia, China, Iran, and all the other countries that are not totally under American media control must view this incident in much the same way. Ronnie boy, R Ronnie, Ronnie, did you literally forget that the Wagner group rebelled last year? They went storming into Russia, they went and occupied the city of Rostov on the Don, they shot down, what was it, like, three uh, Russian military aircraft? Again, that was a major group that went and just said, oh, we're going to go and rebel against Putin, because Putin decided to go and have all these little militias that his the soldiers, the people around him, the oligarchs around him, they could go and each have their own little militia groups, provided that they went and supported the war. So, yes, uh, that was a very, very major blow to Putin's sense of internal legitimacy. Absolutely a blow to it. And, like, to say that he doesn't suffer from that, well, he did. He absolutely, absolutely did. And as far as suicides go... Yep, there have been plenty of suicides of people who have been against the war, against being involved in the war. Um, a particularly memorable one that I'll cite is that I saw a photo of a Russian serviceman who hanged himself in a hallway because he had been literally raped by Katarov's Chechens. <laughs> like, Chechen soldiers had raped this guy. And they'd mistreated all of the other soldiers at the base, and then this guy's like, 
you know, screw my life. This military sucks. I'm going to go and hang myself out of shame, out of despair. This is stuff that's happened. And on the battlefield, well, as far as the other stuff goes, um, just consider that Ukraine has vastly more POWs in it, its captivity than Russia has of Ukrainian POWs. That means that a lot of people that are going to the war do not have the motivation to fight in the war. They're not fanatical about it. They're conscripted. They're there because they were forced to be there. All right, and we'll continue with Ronan's. As far as I know, nothing similar has ever previously occurred in American history and only very rarely in other countries around the world. A South Vietnamese Buddhist monk set himself on fire in 1963 to protest his government's policies. A few months later, the ruling regime he opposed was overthrown. In 2010, a Tunisian food vendor immolated himself and his death launched the Arab Spring, bringing down governments all across North Africa and the Middle East. Although America's dominance over the global media provides a considerable measure of protection against such popular forces, I think our regime may have suffered a major body blow. And he quotes Syrian girl, How many young men like Aaron Bushnell has the U.S. government burned in wars for Israel? How many have they quietly allowed to commit suicide because of what they were forced to participate in? Let no more Americans be sacrificed to the altar of Zionism. All right, so you see that crossover there with, once more, that Syrian girl who is the hyper pro Russia, China, Iranian girl, Syria girl, of course, hyper, <laughs> hyper pro Assad fangirl. All right, so for stars, Ronans doesn't know his history about such things, and he apparently went to that without. Uh, the interview without going and looking that up. So, yep, there have been previous self immolations in America. Uh, he classifies the South Vietnamese government as the ruling regime. So, once more, the sort of propaganda terms that these guys are going to go and throw around for anyone that opposes the side that they are for, which you'll note in this case is the uh, communist, the Soviet Empire. That's what he means when he goes and throws around terms like that. Vietnam. North Vietnam was associated with primarily with the Soviet Union and had conflicts with China. That is how that went. And he classifies the United States government as a regime. Ronan's, I believe, is also a somewhat of a Trump supporter, although also one of those guys who is probably um, the, the far right is only barely Trump supporters. They're very oftentimes consider Trump to be, yes, the better solution, but also one that doesn't exactly comport to what they want for America. You know, of course, Trump being more of the opportunist rather than the ideologue that these guys are. Yep, and of course, Syrian girl wants to go and say how many young men like Aaron has the U.S. government burned in wars for Israel, blah, de, blah, de, blah. <sighs> Sacrifice to the altar of Zionism. Remember, Aaron sacrificed himself for the altar of Hamas. That's what he did, to the altar of Hamas. Amazing how they can go and reframe reality like this. All right, we'll continue with Ronan's. Media rules our world, being vastly more powerful than tank battalions or nuclear weapons, since it acts as a force of mind control, shaping the thoughts and beliefs of the individuals who deploy those physical weapons. I wouldn't be surprised if the billion dollar value of the global media coverage of Bushnell's personal sacrifice told in the billions. That's hardly an insignificant sacrificial accomplishment for an unknown 25-year-old lacking any special skills. In fact, it's difficult to imagine anything else he could have done that has a high chance of success and greater positive impact. <sighs> yep, so once more, this guy's Ronan's is promoting... What Aaron Bushnell did, promoting people to go and sacrifice him, what's more an old sociopath. And what somehow Aaron Bushnell being mentioned as a few lies is about a billions of dollars worth. Gosh. Um greater positive impact too, right? Yep, so against more promoting the violent obsessic act as something that has positive impact. Yep. Same mindset as the far left. You'll note that there is a massive correlation between what a far right nut job like Ron Owens and a far left nut job like the people that we talked about previously, how they go and view the world because they're the same psychology. They just go and 
enact that same psychology in different sorts of causes. Bushnell had been raised in an isolated Christian community, aware from his childhood that the founding figure of his own religion had died a horrible death on the cross in order to redeem mankind. So self-sacrifice and martyrdom had always been a central element of his faith. Furthermore, any individual who enlists in the military must recognize that he might someday be called upon to make the supreme sacrifice for his country, and Bushnell was hardly alone in regarding a ruling regime as an illegitimate one, whose policies were completely antithetical to the values of the country he'd sworn to defend. So in some respects, his fate was not so very different from that of any patriotic American military serviceman who died in the flaming wreckage of his destroyed plane or tank. <sighs> Yep, so just more propaganda speak, um, more promotion of martyrdom. Uh, I remind you, Aaron was not a Christian at the time of his death, but he was strongly influenced by that idea of self-sacrifice. I speculated that Dark Souls, that idea of the person going and burying themselves alive, the hero going and burying themselves to go and bring about a new age, that might have been a severe impact on what he did you can go and dispute that but i think that there was a lot of circumstantial evidence for that given how much aaron was obsessed with the dark soul style games was deep into the lore of those games even as he went into the anarchist path remember ronan's is trying to appeal to a far right audience and so he's going to be like oh yeah aaron bushnell he he hated our regime but you know what he was a good Amer patriotic american at heart no 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 aaron bushnell hated america he said every part about america is fake he said that the founding fathers and their impulse towards freedom was fake all of this is fake so aaron bushnell hated america objectively a true statement and Guys like Ronans are not going to be able to bullshit you about that because, well, hopefully you've gone and done the research to go and confirm that. Previous videos, if you haven't, uh, you can go and see how Aaron downward spiraled into going and hating America. Any patriotic American military serviceman who died in the flaming wreckage of his destroyed plane or tank. That's not an intentional thing. Those people who die in crashes and wrecks and from being shot at and their vehicle being destroyed. That's not intentional. That's not sacrifice. That's not going and... That's not going and coming suicide. It's a very, very different action. Like, going and intentionally killing yourself is so different from being in a dangerous situation where there is the potential of dying. It's a very, very different thing. All right, let's continue with Ronan's. For years, it's been quite apparent to me that America's national government has lost almost all of its political legitimacy, being something much closer to the decaying hulk of the late unlamented USSR than to the republic we once knew. Bushnell's personal sacrifice provided a signpost to that bitter reality, and may have also brought us a step closer to the collapse of that regime. For similar reasons, I think that the tens of thousands of dead Gazans did not lose their lives in vain. Instead, their martyrdom has dominated the global media for the last five months conclusively revealing to the entire world the moral bankruptcy of the international system that had condemned them to their fate. Probably hundreds of millions of people worldwide have now begun asking themselves questions that they would never previously considered. I suspect that those responsible for the destruction of Gaza may come to rue the day when they helped open doors that they may eventually wish had been kept tightly shut. All right. So let's deal with this. For starters, yep, yeah, yeah, this is a guy who doesn't believe in democracy. Obviously, he's far right. Why would he believe in democracy? Uh, lost almost all of its political legitimacy, being something much closer to the King Hulk of the late unlamented USSR, uh, rather than the Republic who wants to. Of course, people who blather on and on about how America is a republic, a republic, a republic, they hate democracy. People always go and say that because they want to go and run the thing off of far right or christian theocratic values whereas the democracy idea is that the people have the ability to go and shape what america is what america becomes this republic idea uh, it's so tied into oligarchy and being far right they of course love oligarchy they think that the average person is stupid moronic whereas we and the intellectual superior elites we're the aristocrats of this age 
we're superior to the regular people. We need to have a republic where our virtues, our values are the ones that are valued. Yep. And this is what they're like fundamentally in the far right. And even in some of those more just standard right stuff, they oftentimes talk about America being a republic as well. And it's based upon the founding fathers. Some of them were more in the aristocratic vein. A lot of them were in the more democratic vein. And that was a split between them that, of course, would not be resolved until uh, a lot later. And even perhaps not entirely even in this moment. So then he talks about the martyrdom of dead Gazans. For the record, Ronans and the site has been consistently promoting the idea that the Israelis false flagged on October 7th. And so they said, oh, they just used it as an excuse to go in and kill a bunch of Palestinians and genocide them. That is the line that the site has generally towed. So it's basically doing alternative reality propaganda, which you've already noticed in my reading of this piece here. And then talking about how the Gazans are martyred, much more religious language designed to appeal to a certain part of the far right that is reading this. Uh, moral bankruptcy of the international system. So they want the Russia, China, Iranian access to go and be the ones to go and shape the new international system. And then they expect the far right in Europe to go and do the whole Orban thing, which is where you go and kneel down and kiss whatever Putin wants to go and tell you to do. That's what they want essentially Europe and eventually America to be. America is a little bit too powerful to be pushed around like that. So they either want to go and split up in the whole, um, like a, basically a neo-confederacy sort of system where you have places like Texas splitting off and then establishing far right-wing republics. They either want that to have happen or they want for America to become an isolationist state where they aren't able to go and influence the other parts of the world. That's fundamentally what these people want. And so then there's also him majorly, 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 majorly overstating what Aaron Bushnell did. Like the influence they had, like hundreds of millions of people. No, 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 no. People who were generally set on one side of this conflict before Aaron Bushnell killed himself, they're still going to be that way. Like nothing really has changed. Like people who are fanatical we have always been fanatical. If someone's like so sheltered that they've never seen a violent act, well, okay. <laughs> so they're ignorant. All right. Now, I thought what I'd go and do is look up a few select comments from this piece as well, because this had several hundred comments on it when I grabbed the screen grab. So um, much more of these comments are going to be the very interesting mixture of the far-right people and the hyper-left pro-Iranian China-Russia people. So you're going to see this very eclectic audience, and you are going to see some of them speak up against this piece, and we're going to go and see that in the comments. First up, though, Anonymous113. This is going to be one of those uh, far-left people. This is a historic philippic from the contemporary world Spinoza. It changed my mind about the ultimate impact of Bushnell's self-sacrifice. Bushnell belonged to the Pantheon with John Brown, Bobby Sands, Joshua Schlute, and Neil Hudson Agate. To honor Bushnell's objectively Christian sacrifice, two states have to be dismantled. Israel's impunity is derived from CIA's. Israeli crime or terror would not be possible without eyes-only intelligence liaison agreements judicially exempted from congressional ratification powers as compacts. CIA's criminal enterprise is inseparable from their kosher Nostra crime family in Tel Aviv. That's what gives the Jewish state its allotment of arbitrary power. I lack the black brass balls to set myself on fire, but we're deep in the forcible overthrow zone and I'm up for that at any time. Let's shake hand this failed state and its favored satellites. Yep, so right there, active promotion of violence, hyper promotion of violence, which of course Ronans was doing as well, by the way, with that talk of uh, Amer the regime in America, America not being a democratic state. This is what he's talking about. So he's doing promoting violence, but he's doing it in a bit more subtle way than this moron is here. Um, and then you also notice that this is probably a person who's coming from Russia or who is deeply steeped in Russian propaganda because in Russia, the FSB controls the entire country. They're the most powerful organization in it. 
uh, Putin is the FSB's man in charge. Uh, the FSB, for those who don't know, is the Russian state secret police, their intelligence agency. This is who is fundamentally in charge of Russia and its ideas. So the FSB currently has agents installed in schools and universities. It goes in overseas curriculum. It's involved in every major media organization as a monitoring position. They can go and tell people in any media organization or any professor to go and change their tune and they have to go and do it. This is the power that that organization holds in Russian society. And so what the Russian does is that they can't understand that America does not operate like that. Like the CIA, the CIA are actually not even a very competent intelligence agency. They are more like the guys that go and turn in reports about uh, intelligence reports about different areas in the world. Otherwise, they're kind of a very mediocre sort of intelligence agency. So to give them this sort of massive power, absolutely false. The CIA does not have this sort of godlike power that people are going and associating it with. And they're also under extreme scrutiny from um, Congress. So they report to Congress and the presidency Coming as no surprise, the CIA was actually formed just a few years after World War II. And guess what? Israel was already in the process of being formed before the CIA even became a thing. And by the way, the, the number of employees that the CIA has, 21,500. Again, a lot of military intelligence agencies have way more than that. Like, this is just to give you an idea. The CIA isn't what people make it out to be the cia it isn't this whole oh we're going to go and you know rule over the world like just ridiculous they don't even have a massive budget they have 15 billion dollars that's not massive as far as american budgets go like that's yeah the u.s military gets 817 billion dollars so the cia gets 15 billion dollars the United States Armed Forces get $817 billion. So you tell me which is the one that is going to be more powerful. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then, yep, promotion of people going and killing themselves. And you'll note that this person is also, by the way, a left person, right? Because they cite John Brown, you know, the famous John Brown who went down and tried to start a slave revolt against the Confederacy. None of these right-wing guys would go and use John Brown as one of their heroes, their pantheon of heroes. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, remember, they all wanted the Confederacy to win because they wanted this whole racial supremacist state where they could go and yep, just have cheap labor all the time and have the white man at the top of everything. That's what these jackasses want. We have Che Guava. The analogy between Bryn and India and Zionists in the USA is nonsense. I went to detail on in an earlier attempted post now vanished by my own fault. Aaron Bushnell was, it seems, from a Christian background, but had become an Antifa-style loon, so there is that. I was at a bar a week ago, had a free Palestine badge hanging off my jacket. As I, as I was about to leave, someone I don't know asked, why are there no demos? Demonstrations, by the way. Demos, demonstration. I suggested that there may be, check the net, but if not, the Israeli U.S. Ambassador Rahm Emanuel may have something to do with it. Thinking later, like the German Red Army faction, members of the Japanese Red Army trained and worked with the PFLP at around the same time. Not that I think it was bad. I did find one very small demo, past tense, high school students outside a major train station. Very small demo, 10 or so. Yep, so that just gives you the idea, so he's person who is apparently critical of the Antifa and their relationship with Aaron, but apparently goes and walks around with a free Palestine badge on his jacket. I read Forge. So this guy's going to have a kind of rough terminology, but you know what? This is going to be the commenter I most agree with because he basically goes and calls out Rodads for his complete bullshit. Question 7. The impact of Aaron Bushnell. Ronan's. I think that the consequences may be enormous. Iron Forge. Wrong. The retard had orders to Israel. America had troops in Israel and vicinity supporting the idea, protecting Jordan and suppressing any re regional entities from taking up arms outside of direct participants. 
The retired Bushnell is a disgrace of American veteran since he pulled off a political stunt where American troops are sent. That's unbecoming a deserter, disobeying direct orders, too cowardly to stand the court martial for his dissidents. Why not publicly refuse his orders, get arrested, and stand the court martial like a man? He could have received some sympathies from protesters, but we already have our special forces there, some protecting the King of Jordan, some supporting Israeli civilians, some probably in ops with the IDF. Since the retard was in the Air Force, with our army teams there, he probably wasn't in any direct combat units. I haven't heard of him being on a spec op team either, so he probably was involved in combat engineering, airlift, medical supplies, etc. If he didn't like this scenario, I'm sure he could have helped out civilian casualties on his off-duty hours. Chances are, his unit may have been involved in supporting civilians from all factions there. We'll eventually find out more. Why aren't we seeing more consistent su suicidal acts performed by veterans in front of the Israeli embassy and consulates by our troops? Enormous consequences would have had more followers. Protests by veterans and veterans' families across the nation. Protests by veterans against deploying our troops to Israel and vicinity. The retard would have gone to prison and have been discharged with the lowest bad conduct rating if he had simply declined his orders and turned himself in. Probably will be posthumously discharged as such. Yet the MSM, veteran community, and alt media stopped covering this after a few days once we found out that the retard had orders there. Our troops were already deployed there and he had orders. Not a hero, not a martyr, maybe a woke tard. Definitely a coward taking the easy way out to avoid standing trial and enduring a prison sentence. Didn't save any lives in the process, only inconveniences. Embarrassment and shame upon his family, no matter how people try to spin this. That's why most rational Americans don't give a shit about this retard's acts and will soon forget about him. Hope this debunks any attempts to create some sort of enormous consequence narrative glorifying a sad, selfish event. Americans, veterans, active duty troops deployed to the region and their families deserve better, Mr. Uns. By the way, Jesus never existed. Just a cult of amalgamated cults and Jewish Bible fanboy hijackers. Sponsored by Constantine at Nicaea. <laughs> You know, this is one of the reasons why you do occasionally read sites like this, right? Just because there's certain people who say stuff that you would never be able to say on the um, uh, the uh, mainstream sites, like just <laughs> the sort of language that gets used. But yeah, um, generally good. Um, good, actually, probably someone who has a oddly decently solid mindset for someone who is hanging out, unfortunately, on sites like this. Um. If you listen to this, Mr. Iron Forge, uh, I salute you and uh, perhaps come over to uh, better pastures. All right, we'll continue with the comments. Tibrashev, Israeli Jews aren't behaving in a Christ-like manner at all. Israel should be turned over to Jesus's people, the Palestinians. <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, um... So first up, complaining that Israeli Jews apparently aren't acting like Christians. Well, I can't see that. I mean, they've just been persecuted by Christians throughout their history. Why would they act like Christians? And then Israel should be turned over to Jesus' people, the Palestinians, all right? Yep, Jesus wasn't a Palestinian. But for the record, once more, the Palestinians, they, look, you just have to go and ask them. They're not the people that were originally from that region. They're the soldiers of Muhammad, the descendants of the soldiers of Muhammad, the Peninsula Arabs, who can't, went into that region and conquered it. That's who they want to be. That's who they say they're descended from. Go and ask the Jordanians. It's the same thing. That's who they are. The Arabs that were living in that region before that time, and there were Arabs, for the record, in the Gaza. It was connected to a group called the Nabataeans and the Ghazanids, those Arabs fought against Muhammad's forces and were defeated, but didn't by and large convert. And they went instead and migrated into the northern areas of their Byzantine allies. And there they became the uh, part of the Syrian Christian community. So that's, if you want to go and say, oh, that's who was living there, that would be more correct. But again, the Palestinians are not Jesus's people. The Palestinians are the Peninsula Arabs. That is who they are. That is who they would want. Remember, they're hardcore 
Muslims. That is an honor to say that they have that sort of lineage, to say that they are descended from Muhammad's army. That is an honor to them. They like that fact. Uh, we have Anon149, Ari Aaron Bushnell. His call for military to refuse supporting genocide resonate amongst a broad percentage of military, maybe even a majority, to be determined. Uh, uh, no, it, it does not. The military has people of different viewpoints in it, but by and large, you have to remember that the military in the U.S. is supposed to be a, a political organization, and... Uh, and so even the people that are deployed to the Israel region, remember, they're doing airdrops to go and help out the Palestinians. That's what you see arranged there. 